Uh, I'm Vice Admiral Kenneth C. Malley, United States Navy, retired. I'm here representing, or not representing, but uh, for Corporal John D. Keelbeck. This interview is being conducted at uh, Ginger Cove at Annapolis. And he is not present here and is being represented by one of his relatives, Peggy Powers. I'll give you a few details on him to start with. John was born in 1889 in Wisconsin. His parents are Henry and Pauline, and he grew up in St. Jo St. Joseph, Minnesota, educated through eighth grade. Uh, we don't have the records. He either enlisted or drafted in the Army in Montana, and he was stationed then in Cape Lewis, Tacoma, Washington. His, his rating was a corporal machine gun company. 362nd Infantry, and he died in combat in October 13, 1918. Uh, with me today is Peggy Powers, and what, what she has is a series of letters from him over the years, and she is going to go through some of those to uh, pass on some information from him. So with that, Peggy, it's up to you. Johnny, as he was called in the family, wrote to his sisters because his parents only spoke German and read German and he couldn't write German. One of his letters to his brother, William, who was going to be drafted soon, he said, when I arrived here, I was dead broke and I, um, I'm certain they will pay me soon, but so As soon as possible, I, I, I can't do that. Whenever you are drafted, take your suitcase and, along and two suits of underwear, a couple of shirts, and you will be in the same fix as I was. They didn't furnish us any clothes till last week, and don't take your best suit of clothing along if you can help it they might be different when you get them later on uh, where else is it? Yeah, I forgot where it was Where did you read the part about the guns? I, I don't know where that letter is. Do you have the letter handy from the uh, Red Cross? Did you go through that one? Said to sent to Katie Kiebelbeck from the Red Cross after the death of John, as you have no doubt received a telegram telling you about the death of your brother at our hospital. He came to us a few days ago with gunshot and shrapnel wounds in his back and neck. Uh, peritonitis and other complications set in in spite of all of our care of good nurses and doctors, he passed away at 4.30 in the morning, October 13th. We buried your brother with two other of his comrades who had given their lives for the same great cause. Their funeral was a military one. Their caskets were covered with the flag of their country and six of their comrades carried them out to the cemetery 
and in a chapel. The priests of the Catholic Church officiated. After the casket was lowered, the bugler sounded taps. It was so impressive to see the boys stand at attention while the sweet notes of the bugle sounded up and down the valley. It is a lovely valley, too, that we have chosen as a resting place for our boys. It is green and cool with a little stream and all kinds of wild flowers in it. The cemetery is on the slope of a sunny hill that overlooks the stream and the French village. The village is quaint and so typically French of the olden times. The people are of the village are the style of the olden times too. And they love our brave boys and will cherish and keep green the place where we bury our precious dead. Father Chupal was your boy was with your boy before he passed away and administer the last rites. I hope that he will write to you also as he may be able to tell you more than I can. Your brother was not suffering when I saw him last, and I thought that he was getting along all right. I do not think that it ever occurred to him that he would be called upon to go. I am a member of the Home Communication Service of the American Red Cross and I want to help you in any way that I can. Please let us know if there's anything that I can do for you at this time, as we want to do all in our power to make it easier for the ones who weep at home and send these men to win a great cause. For as you should be proud to have given such a precious gift to your country. Your friend, Elizabeth Andrews, American Red Cross, Base 42, APO 731. Is he, is he buried over in France? Yes, he is. I may have missed that one. Maybe. Well, you had a couple other letters there that were... He is at Moose, or he's in Argonne. Um, I marked that one. I thought I marked another one. I wanted the one about the... Well, they take the biggest and strongest men out of 6,000 and put us in the machine gun company. There are 40 of us now, and they will pick 50 more on the next draft. Uh, in a few days, all of us were out about four hours practice every day with these machine guns, and each man carried a 45 automatic Colt revolver. You ought to hear the noise we make. It is lots of fun, but we won't have fun very long. They figure on sending us to France soon, sometime in December. I hope you ain't drafted yet, but you can figure on getting drafted in sometime soon. I don't know where that letter is that I was going to read. Oh, I was corporal for a long time which pays $36 a month, and I will be made sergeant this week. That will pay $48 a month. I told the captain this morning that I didn't like to stay here, that I want to go with the first bunch that goes to France. The captain told me to take in the lieutenant training school while we are here 
but he will try to keep me with him when we go to France and give me my promotion when we get on the firing line. I have been bayonet and machine gun instructor in our company for over two months, so you can see that I ain't no dummy. I learn easy and very fast. There are soldiers here that have been in the company for eight years, drilling under my command. And that should mean a man is a man when he will and when he isn't. Because of my eyesight, I really can't do any better. I can't find the words that I wanted to find. can't read his writing any that I have to have I'm reading off of the copies because I can't read the other This is the one I want. There should be two pages on that one. I wanted to read the one where you really enjoyed the bunch of guys he was with, and I don't even see that one. Try and read that one. It looks like there's some interesting items in there. I thought you were reading one over there that he said he liked. I read that one. I know I did. I'm not doing very well. Sorry. Also, I have a copy of the letter that my mother wrote to him and was sent back because he was gone. This one says, he writes, I, while I have a little time from Camp Lewis, I thought I would let you know that I am well and happy and hope the same for you. I certainly like it out here and I am in the machine gun company. I don't get as much drilling as the rest of the boys. We are more target practice with them in the machine guns and they shoot 400 shots in a minute 
that out to scare the Germans. It certainly is the best job I've ever had all my in all my life. The only darn thing is about this area is there is no saloons around here. The state of Washington is bone dry. Um, I can't read it. That's it. Okay. Can't be as much more help, I don't think. I thought I was organized when I came, but it all got messed up. <laughs> well, we didn't make the 30, I, I, I do, make the 30 minutes, so I don't know what that means. Either. I do have um, a picture of the, do they want pictures or anything like that? This is, hold this, it up in front of it and say what it this is. This is a picture of the uh, monument. No, no, hold it in front of you. I don't know where to hold it. The monument in his honor in his hometown of St. Joe. I, I can't get it from here. It doesn't show up anyway. And I do have a picture of him, a very tiny one. I threw away the obituary, but... pictures of him in uniform. I've never seen any. I don't know if they can read that or not. And the last letters that the family wrote to him were returned. Can you read those? Well, they're, ones that, they're the ones that they wrote. That's okay. Make you something of interest in there. Well, one of them talks about the uh, flu epidemic. Well, I left it all in the envelope, and the envelope has stamps all over it. was so organized before I came here. There they are. This is what the envelope looked like when it came back. I think it's kind of interesting. Dear Brother Johnny, I must write to you again to find out how you are doing. Along we received two letters from France when I was home a week ago. One was from you and one was from Billy, their brother. Um, we were, rather yours was addressed to Brother Henry, but for some reason came to us. How happy we were to hear from you, dear boys. And it had been the first one we had gotten from Willie since he is over there. And only the second one from you. We were certainly glad that you are well again. And we hope that 
you will stay well too. Willie says he's getting along all right. I wish you and Willie could see one another, but that's not likely. Most of the people around here are sick now with the influenza. Many of them die too. What a new sickness around the, here. That's the new sickness around here. I am back to my old job again, and I hope I'll be, I'll be here another month. And I had gone to Minneapolis and stayed with Nick three days. They had a little boy. Nick sure is proud of him. And of course, my lady coaxed me still. I came back again, so I did go and I like it already. I, I don't understand this. I can't read where. The doctor gave me an injection tonight that I should not get this sickness, but I don't think I would get it anyway. Never was sick in all my life. I sent that sickness here too. I think it must be because it's called the Spanish influenza. It's so bad in Minneapolis where I was down there that all the shows, churches, and everything were closed. Everything is all closed still. Johnny, you would just you just had to see what it was like. No. You just ought to see this world over here now. Things, there is nothing left but girls, women and old men. Only it's a fright. This last draft certainly took all the boys that were here left. Well, I think I'll, I must make the best of it until you will all come home again and want this to be a happy world then. Well, Johnny, I think I will have to ring off this time, hoping to hear from you sometime soon. Please do write when you get time, sending you much love. I am your loving sister, Susie. Nice letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Susie was about 15 or 16 when she wrote that. Uh, I think that was really nice. Anything else? <laughs> I think not. Well, we didn't make the 30 minute mark. I don't know what that means. But maybe they can add less stuff. Should I go out and get whoever it is to throw it off? Or? Get all, we get all this all lined up together, and you know, what I did when I got the letters, I translated them, put them, and typed them all so you could read it clearly. And if I didn't understand the words, I just leave a blank. <laughs> well, you were more organized. I just went down to the copy machine and copied, but I thought I was organized. But now, the, um, for me, the light is getting very dim in here. So, but I'll try to put them back together for them. And because I did make a copy of each one, so I'll try to do these date wise. Yeah. But uh, all his letters were signed, Your Loving Brother Johnny. And I 
you know, we we forget that people were just as loving and thoughtful then as they are today. But we didn't make 30, but she's close. Admiral, do you mind doing a note?